I feel like last quarter was the time when all the brands were launching cream blushes and now everybody's launching new lip products. I'm not mad about it though, I love reviewing lip products. And I'm gonna start with the ones that I'm most excited about, which are the Hourglass Phantom Volumizing Glossy Bombs. They launched four new shades and I purchased three. The first one I'm gonna start with is the shade Sense, which they describe as a peachy beige and I definitely agree with that. It's super sheer in comparison to some of the other shades in this line or it's just lighter, but it does seem a lot more sheer than the others, which is great because honestly, I love this formula, but the only shade I felt really worked for me was Slip, and now I love all three of these. Next we have the shade Rise, which they describe as a cool beige. Out of the three I bought, I think this is the one I could do without. It honestly just looks like a clear gloss with a little bit of a hint of like a gray brown. Not the most flattering color on me personally, so I might pass this one off to a friend. And my favorite out of the three new shades is Desire, which is a cool pink. It's not too cool, it's not too light, it's just a beautiful shade. Desire and the old shade Slip, which is a warm rose, are now tied for my favorites in the Hourglass Volumizing Bomb thing line. And if you haven't tried this formula, these are a very, very glossy, sheer, melty lipstick lip balm hybrid formula. Once you twist them up, you can't twist them back down. So just be aware of that. Do not over twist these. And because they're so melty, they can get a little bit messy around the packaging. They also don't have any kind of detectable scent for me, but they do have a noticeable cooling sensation, which I think is supposed to plump the lips. I don't really like anything that's like pepperminty or menthol or plumping, but it's pretty subtle and it definitely doesn't dry my lips out. There are a lot of minty cooling products that really dry my lips and this one doesn't. I will say because this formula is on the thinner side, it can be a little bit slippy and it can migrate outside my lip lines if I apply too much. So I always go back in and kind of smudge it around and that really helps eliminate that migration. Migration? I feel like I'm talking about like bird patterns. And also I'm just going to briefly touch on this. It's not a new product, but it's the Iconic London Melting Point Balm. I got the shade Undone and I have an Instagram reel that I just filmed comparing this to the Hourglass one and they are almost exactly exact dupes for each other, but I actually prefer the formula of Iconic London. So I am going to apply it because I feel like some of you would probably prefer that I do that, even though it's not new. It's also a click up format. This one though is $22 and it has a fruity scent and no cooling sensation. This is the shade Undone. As you can see, it's very, very light, blanks out my lips. So I would prefer to wear this with a lip liner for a little bit of structure. That's how I saw the models were doing it on the Iconic London page. But I always want you to see what products look like without any lip liner so you can see what they are true to color. And honestly, because I love this formula so much, I think I want to get some of the darker shades because this is quite light. And what's great about the Iconic London ones compared to Hourglass is these are all a range of nudes across different skin tones. Whereas Hourglass is more, you know, like brighter, um, more diverse shades. There are reds and berries and oranges and beiges and roses. So there's just a lot more you can choose from with Hourglass, but they don't have a ton of like skin colory shades, which Iconic London does. So it kind of just depends on your budget, your preferences, etc. Next up, my first ever purchase from Kylie Cosmetics. This is the Tinted Butter Bomb, and I got the shade Kylie, also a click-up format that you can't click back down, just like the Charlotte Tilbury Happy Kiss lipstick bombs. These are basically the same thing, both in formula and in packaging. Very, very like thin, plastic, cheap, dinky packaging. I don't like that choice, but at least at this price point of $18, it's better than, you know, what you're getting with Charlotte Tilbury for that higher price point. This is the shade Kylie, and it was described as a nude pink on the website, but it looks looked like more of a My Lips But Better kind of muted rosy mauve shade, which I was really excited about. This though gives me like MAC snob vibes, very much a very light, cool toned pink, not something I'd ever reach for. Unlike the Charlotte Tilbury Happy Kiss Bombs, these have no scent, not even like a crayon, you know, lip product ingredient kind of scent. It just smells like absolutely nothing. And to compare the formula, these are a bit thinner. So if you liked the Charlotte Tilbury Happy Kiss Bombs, but you felt they were a little bit too thick for you, you might really love these and they have different shades. I just think that the Charlotte Tilbury Happy Kiss lipstick shades are a lot better than the ones from Kylie, just in terms of my own personal preferences, but obviously everyone's different. Honestly, I would love to try more of these because the formula is beautiful, but because this shade was so far off from the way it appeared on the website, I'm just hesitant to buy anything else. I also made my first ever Refi purchase. This is the new Lip Blur formula and I got the shade Orchid. I would describe this as a warm berry, quite similar to Ficlo's Lip Serum and Gospel, but it has a little bit more red in it. And on camera, it's definitely looking a little bit more like warm, peachy than it is in person. It's a little bit more of a warm berry in person, which I prefer. So that's what one coat looks like, and I'll do two. I don't know if you could see while I was applying it, but these just glide right on. They're so incredibly creamy. Definitely the creamiest like matte blurring formula I've ever tried. You know, in comparison, the Violette's Bisou Bombs, those were super drying on my lips. I really didn't like them. They emphasize texture like crazy. But these just have a beautiful buttery quality to them that I really like. I did have a little dry patch 
on my lower lip this morning and when I shot an Instagram reel reviewing this, I showed that little dry patch up close. This formula does definitely emphasize texture of dry spots, but it doesn't emphasize lip lines. So it does have that blurring quality when it comes to vertical lip lines, but it will definitely emphasize any like dry patches that you have. So then I exfoliated my lips and now it went on so much better, but just something to be aware of. Also, this is unscented, it's fragrance free, but it does have quite a noticeable like crayon scent, you know what I mean? So just keep that in mind. Also, I just don't love the packaging. It gets a little bit messy, which is fine. I'm totally used to that. I just don't love the shape and size of the bullet. If this were a little bit slimmer, then it would be okay to do a round kind of shape for me. But I do find that I have to be careful not to get outside my lip lines because it is a little bit bigger and, you know, with a rounded tip, you're not getting as precise of an edge. And I do have smaller lips with a sharper cupid's bow. So just something to note if you have similar lips. But honestly, gorgeous formula. I'm really excited to keep wearing this. And I think the shades they launched are really beautiful. They're all like different versions of a flushed lip. They have like an apricot. They have this warm berry. They have like a deeper brown cinnamon shade. They have a wine shade. I think they did a really good job in catering to like a natural lip look for a lot of different complexions. So Refai is definitely a brand that I'm going to watch. Oh, and these are $24 and I got them on the Refai website. Next, I got the new Kosas Weightless Lipstick in the shade Daydream. This is their new formula of the weightless lipsticks. I much prefer this to the old one. It has the same scent to me. It's like vanilla with a little bit of orange. And these are a lot thinner and more emollient than the previous formula. I did not love the Kosas lipsticks. I felt like they were really stiff. They dried my lips out a little bit, but what I loved about that line was the color. Rose Water, Stardust, and Undone, I think were some of the best lipstick shades I've ever seen anyone create. And this new line, I unfortunately, I was just very disappointed by the shades. I went and I saw them all in Sephora. This was the only one that I thought would really work for me. All of the lighter shades were like way too light and totally made me look dead. I'm just disappointed because the original Kosas was, you know, the black and white packaging. It felt luxe, but it was still an indie brand and it felt very sophisticated and very timeless and minimal. And now this new evolution of Kosas, I get that the founder is saying like, you know, now I'm no longer afraid to play with color and all of that. But I really feel that she's just talking about packaging because now that they're this big brand, they're launching more and more shades. Their packaging is super colorful. And I feel like Sheena, the founder, just has not done shade ranges like she used to in the way that I thought they were really thoughtful. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I just feel like even with the wet stick lipsticks, the shades were really disappointing, but the formulas were fantastic. So I don't know. I used to think of Kosas as a brand that got color really well, and now I'm starting to feel the opposite. So this is one coat of Daydream, and now I'll show you two. Super easy to build it up to fuller pigment because it's so creamy and emollient compared to their previous formula. So I do find it a lot more comfortable on the lips. And I think the shade Daydream is really beautiful. I would describe it as a pinky berry. I'm definitely gonna be reaching for it more in the fall and winter months, but with just a light layer or even with like a little bit of a brown lip liner, a gloss on top, you do have a really beautiful, natural, flushed kind of lip look effect. I'm just bitter about Kosas because they got rid of some of the best shades. Like I saw so many comments on their Instagram page being like, how could you get rid of rose water? Rose water was the best color ever invented. Same thing with Stardust, same thing with Unknown. And Kosas did say that if you liked rose water, you could get this, but it's so much darker and it's more of a berry than like a natural looking pink. And they said Undone has a similar color in the new line, but I tried it and it was way too dark and the undertones were totally different. And then they got rid of Stardust, which was another just incredible shade. And it's weird to me because they kept Vegas, which is a shade that I think is not very flattering on most people. I feel like you have to have very, very, very warm undertones in order to make that look good. Meanwhile, though, they got rid of like some of their best selling colors. So I don't really understand how that works and why they would do that if they knew that so many people loved those shades. But either way, you know, if you can find a color in the new weightless formula that you like, then I do think this lipstick formula is great. And the weightless lipsticks are $26. Next is the Kosas Wet Stick Lipstick in the shade Malibu. This is interesting. It's it's fascinating to me that they launched this the same time that they launched the new formulation of the Weightless Lipsticks. This is supposed to be a balm and a lipstick. And while I don't feel that there's any particular nourishment of my lips, it is very comfortable. It's just an extremely thin formula. Like you rub your lips together and it feels like you just have a little bit of like an oil on. It's that thin. Now, compared to something like the Revlon Glass Shine Lipsticks, these are really slippery and migrate up outside my lip lines, so I don't ever reach for this formula. The Kosas one is super lightweight and like slippery, oily, but I don't find that it migrates outside my lip lines. It stays in my lip lines, and that's when I can get on board with a lightweight formula versus something where I have to constantly be like checking my lip lines like the Revlon. This is actually a lightweight formula that I think is done really well. I also enjoy the vanilla scent of these so much more than the weightless lipsticks creamsicle scent. 
scent. That one just kind of, I don't know, it like grosses me out a little bit. I don't really like orange, but this is just a classic vanilla that I really enjoy. They're also $24. The only thing for me is that, again, the, the colors just are not, I don't know, they're not doing it for me. I swatched all of them at Sephora and they were just really disappointing. This was the only one that I could really see myself purchasing and they didn't have Malibu when I was there. So I ordered it online and I think you can see, again, it looks like Max Snob, but on the website, none of the models have a color like this when they wear Malibu. It looks deeper and it looks more warm and rosy. So I'm just really frustrated by that. It really irks me when brands don't do the due diligence to make sure that their products are accurately represented online because now I just wasted my money. If I had known it was going to be this color, I wouldn't have purchased it. And I tried a bunch of the other shades. They're either like way too light or they're just way too deep. There isn't really any like middle of the range colors, which are what I normally reach for. And because it is a thinner formula, I do feel like it emphasizes lip lines just a little bit. Not a big deal, really comfortable, but the shade is just a miss for me. Next, we have the new e.l.f. Squeeze Me Lip Balm in Vanilla Frosting. This is lovely and it's $4, which is insane. The e.l.f. Squeeze Me Lip Balm is really, really nice as a daytime lip balm. It is in between thin and thick, but there's a beautiful kind of buttery quality to it that makes it just really comfortable, not something super occlusive that's gonna like grip the lips and really protect them and stay all day, but it totally softens the lips and I really love the scent. It is quite strong though, just so you know, so if you don't really love vanilla scents, I'd probably stay away from this one. And it is teeny tiny at 0.21 ounces, but for $4, I definitely don't mind that. I think it's a really great daytime lip balm option and you will certainly be seeing this in my upcoming lip balm video. Another new product launch I had to get my hands on is the Merit Signature Lipstick in their limited edition shade that they recently brought back for, again, a limited amount of time. It's aperitif. So that's what it looks like as just a sheer wash of color on the lips. And now I'm going to show you how I build it up. So that is aperitif. To me, it's what I describe it. How does Merit describe it actually? Like sometimes it looks orangey, sometimes it looks more neutral, and then sometimes it even looks a little bit cool toned. They describe this as a sheer true red. Okay. So they describe this as neutral. So it kind of depends on both the lighting and the undertones of your skin. For me, I think it pulls a little bit on the more orangey side. I don't know. You tell me. I'm I'm not really great when it comes to color theory. I think this is a great shade that will look good on almost everybody. I have a really hard time finding reds that look good on me, but I think this one works. I tend to find that brighter reds look better on my complexion than something more muted or deeper. And even though it's pretty sheer at first, as you saw, it's really easy to build it up. It's comfortable. They have this kind of like sheer translucent quality to the formula so that you can see your lip lines underneath or you can see like lip freckles underneath. It's not like an opaque lipstick. And they definitely do have have, you know, a butteriness or more like creamy quality to them, but they don't slide around outside my lip lines, which is really nice. They do feel like a lighter weight lipstick, which is really nice. I don't really feel like I'm wearing a ton when I'm wearing these. I do think there are more flattering formulas. Like there are a lot of different lipstick formulas I can think of that I think smooth over lip lines and just make my lips look a little bit more youthful, but it is a creamy, comfortable, beautiful lipstick. And I really do enjoy the packaging of the Merit lipsticks. These are also totally fragrance and essential oil free. Live Tinted is launching three new shades of their Hue Gloss formula, and these will be coming out on July 10th. This is my favorite from the new line. It is the shade Grace, and it's just kind of a lighter, muted, dusty rose. I'll also insert a clip here of me applying Grace in some different lighting in the B-roll footage, just so you can see something a little bit more clearly. This is definitely my new favorite shade from the Lip Tinted Hue Gloss line. They are also launching the shade Honor, which is a shimmery, kind of frosty, peachy pink. This one is definitely not one that I would reach for. I just don't think that frosty shades are all that flattering on me. And for my, my whole life, I've also had this weird aversion to like shimmery peachy pinks. I've said it so many times, but like NARS Orgasm, I forget the name of the ColourPop shadow, but it was like a pink eyeshadow with some gold shimmer. Something about pink with gold makes me look like I have allergies or like looks kind of unflattering. I don't know. I think it might just be me and my personal complexion and preferences. So this is not one that I'll be reaching for and I'll be passing it to a friend, but I can definitely see a lot of people really loving this as like a summertime lip luminizer shade. Next up, we have the shade Smart, which is a beautiful kind of hot tomato-y orange red. It looks very orange in the tube, but for some reason on my lips, it looks much more cool toned. Like it looks more like a cherry red. So I think it just depends on your skin tone. Maybe I do have cool undertones, so that might be interfering with it, but I'm curious to hear if any of you try it at some point, how it looks on you. Definitely a beautiful year round red. And then lastly, I'm just going to put in some footage of the three previous shades that they have. My favorite being the shade Proud, which is 
is a gorgeous peachy beige. They say that this is a soft rose, but I very much disagree with that. Like there's, I don't really see much pink in there at all. To me, I just see beige and a little bit of peach. So I'm also curious to see if you guys had that experience, but I love it. This is like a perfect nude gloss for me. They also had the shade Brave, which is a deep kind of spiced brown. Great as a vampy lip or someone with my complexion or great if you have deeper skin, this will be more of like a natural kind of like lip perfecting shade. And then they had a limited edition shade that I guess is now permanent to the line. It's the shade Brilliant and it's essentially just a clear with a lot of like gold frost, gold shimmer. But what's great about the lip tinted formula is that you cannot feel any grit or glitter on your lips. It is totally smooth, feels amazing. The lip tinted hue gloss formula is $20 on their website. Oh, I have a code. Hold on. Lip Tinted just gave me a code. What is it? Aha! You can get 15% off your first Lip Tinted order with the code LTKATE. 15. So if you want to try it, you can use that code and it's a one-time only code. As for the formula, this is a gorgeous, cushiony, thick, balmy, gel-like formula, extremely similar to the Fit Glow Lip Serums, but more than half the price. These, however, don't give me the same nourishment and lip treatment that I get from the Fit Glow Lip Serums. For me, these are just more so like a really comfortable gel-like gloss that is hydrating. So if you've wanted to try the Fit Glow Lip Serums, but you just couldn't justify the price or it's outside your budget, you can definitely try something like the Lip Tinted Hue Glosses. It's a little bit of a different experience. For example, the Fit Glow ones have more grip, so I do find that they last longer on the lips, whereas Lip Tinted is just as thick and cushiony, but it's more buttery, so there's more slip to it. It honestly just depends on your preferences. Fit Glow has a little bit of an earthy vanilla scent, although lately, because of the climate and the vanilla that they've sourced, it's pulling a little bit floral, so I haven't been reaching for the Fit Glow Lip Serums, whereas these are totally, you know, fragrance-free. I only have one con to these, and that's, oh my god, even just thinking about it, I got full body chills. You guys are gonna understand me, and I'm so sorry to do this to you, but I can't. I can't with the caps metal caps. Listen to this. It's just like terrible. So when I'm holding these in my hand and they're rubbing together, uh, I literally feel tightness in my chest. It is the same thing as nails on a chalkboard for me. I can't, I cannot handle it. So I can only like hold one at a time because then I don't have issues with the metal caps, but still even just feeling that metal gives me the heebie-jeebies. I don't know. It's just something I've always had. Same thing with like touching paper or paper towels when you have like slightly wet hands. I'm not gonna go into it because I feel like people are just gonna click out of this video. They're gonna be like, why are you torturing me? Anyways, I just wanted some of you to have a heads up that they do have metal caps. I also purchased the new Glow Recipe Plum Plump Hyaluronic Gloss Balm. This balm is actually one of the reasons why my big lip balm video keeps getting pushed. I just can't figure out my thoughts on this. Like, it feels nice. It's a stiffer, waxier formula than Laneige, so it feels heavier on the lips. It's not sticky, though. It's just kind of, like, waxy heavy. The main reason I'm deterred by it, though, is it does have a slight, very slight sweet plum scent that is almost not noticeable to me, and I have the most sensitive nose in the world. However, it tastes like plastic, and the whole time I have this on, I'm just like, Ugh, like, Ugh, you know? You know, like I don't, I don't like that plastic taste. But I think a lot of times when I have that experience, most people don't notice it, and I just happen to be very sensitive to tastes and smells. So most of you will probably be fine. But for those of you who are more sensitive and have, you know, Sherlock Holmes level noses and taste buds, you know, just something to be aware of. I also just haven't necessarily felt like this does anything for my lips. When I wear the Laneige mask or the K Skin mask, the Make Beauty Solar Citron, and a couple others that come to mind in a pot, those really do soften my lips, but this one I just feel like is there. Again though, I, I just really need to experience this a little bit more before I provide my concrete thoughts. So for now, I'm just going to give it like a maybe. And this lip balm is $22. The last products I purchased are two other shades of the relatively new product from Romand, the Glasting Melting Bombs. I have uh, a review of Kaya Fig, Mauve Whip, and Nougat Sand that I'll leave linked on the screen above. And now I'm going to show you Sorbet Balm and Coco Nude. This one is Coco Nude, and it's so much more sheer than the others in the Glasting Melting Bomb range, which is really nice because sometimes I feel like in order to really build up the shine and the bombiness of those, you have to layer it a few 
few times. With this one, because it's so sheer, I can layer it up and I'm not getting too much pigment. So I really like that there's a more sheer shade in the range and I wish they had others. These are another melty lipstick lip balm formula, so they do get messy, but unlike most others that you twist up, you can twist these back down, which is awesome. This last one is the color Sorbet Balm, which is just this bright kind of sheer-ish orange, but it has a lot more pigment than Coco Nude. So if you want something more sheer, go Coco Nude. And if you love something super pigmented, any of the other shades in the line will do. This formula is incredible. It's very similar to the Charlotte Tilbury Happy Kiss lipstick balms, ever so slightly thinner, like ever so slightly less grippy. So on the lips does feel similar to the Kylie Cosmetics Tinted Butter Balm, but I much prefer these. I love that these have a nice fruity scent. It is quite strong, just so you know, but I do love a fruity scent. But these just have this like cushioniness to them that the Kylie ones don't have. It has that cushiony quality that the Charlotte Tilbury Happy Kiss Balms have. So I just love these and I also love the shades. The Charlotte Tilbury ones are great, but Pillow Talk and Crystal Happy Kiss are really the only two that I reach for. Whereas I reach for all of the shades that I've gotten in the Romand Glasting Melting Balm line. And I actually have a huge pile of Romand Juicy Lasting Tints, the Romand Dewy Waterful Tint, and two other uh, tints from K Beauty brands. And I was going to do a kind of dupes video, compare it to Rare Beauty, or maybe instead do just a big K Beauty haul. So let me know what you might be more interested in. Do you want like a K Beauty haul where I'll just try a variety of makeup from Yes Style? Or do you think it would be cooler to do a like Korean lip tint video comparing it to Rare Beauty? Let me know what you think will be more informative or entertaining and I'm happy to do it. That's it. Those were my speed reviews of all the latest lip launches that I was able to get my hands on. Let me know what you thought was most intriguing for you. Like out of all of this, I'm super curious. Where do your preferences align? Do you like matte balms? Do you like kind of melty glossy balms? Do you like a really high pigment lipstick? Really curious to see where most of my followers stand. Definitely let us know your thoughts on this product so we can all share our experiences in the comment section. And wherever you are, I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next one.